welcome to ResX, an indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. And by everybody, we mean everyone across Turtle Island, from young to old, to non-indigenous to indigenous. My name is Cadmus Delorme. I am a member of the Cows' First Nation. I currently live in Regina. I work at the First Nations University of Canada. And my name is Erin Goodpipe. I am a proud Dakota woman from Standing Buffalo First Nation. I am a lovely research assistant um, at the Indigenous Peoples Health Research Centre where I attend classes at the University of Regina in pursuit of an arts degree with a major of anthropology and a minor in Indigenous Health Studies. So Cadmus, tell me, how did you get involved with ResX? ResX. Mm. So I have the magazine. I was approached by the publisher, Chris Ross, mm -hmm. and he said there is this opportunity that we are going to get into TV. And I told him I do have the face for radio, so I guess <laughs> I can try be on TV. And I seen an opportunity, I seen what the vision and everything is about, and I wanted to be a part of the team. So Aaron, how did you become involved with ResX? Well, you know, I'm um, a university presence. Um, I network a lot. Um, so therefore, I had gotten in touch with uh, Shawnee and Pete. She's uh, someone who's kind of a mentor to me, someone I look up to. And Shawnee actually um, approached me about this, uh, this wonderful idea um, and opportunity that she was presenting to me that Chris had. And I know I always read the magazine. I'm constantly uh, going to the University of Regina and all the facilities there just to see what's going on in our community. So. Great. Yeah. Okay, let's get down to business. Our first story is on the vision of ResX. Let's check it out. Like for me, it's it's always been a battle to get credit or to you know to do to get anything right. But it doesn't matter anymore because you know I, I as long as I know what I'm doing, that's all that matters, right? My name is Chris Tyrone Ross. I'm 35 years old and I'm originally from the Red Earth First Nation. Born and raised in Saskatoon, uh, Saskatchewan, uh, but grew up all over the province. Uh, and I've been residing in here in Regina since 2008 for the last seven, eight years. The important part of why we named it Res X is also because during Treaty, when our ancestors signed treaty they didn't know how to read english they just signed it with an x so that's how we wanted to symbolize that treaty relationship and it continues on today with our relations that we have with our non-first nations clients we think that's part of practicing treaty today so that's how i look at a lot of business as well we're still practicing treaty and so ResX eventually uh, went on to become a pretty big magazine but we've had our uh, our highs and lows Res X has roots going back as far as 1997 when I was 16 years old. I started my first newspaper in Fort Capel called Generation X, and that went on for about four years. Um, but I took a break in 2001 to focus on university, my first crack at it. And uh, I was away from the publishing business for about three or four years, and I really started to miss it. I really started to miss doing my own thing, and I was. 24 at this time and I was wanting to do something something similar to Gen X but with a different name uh, with a different focus um, so that's where Res X started we wanted to keep the X alive in there and that's what I wanted I didn't want to just uh, leave the publishing world again I wanted to find a way to keep our name out there so that's what we did over the next uh, four or five years we just did shows we did events concerts after parties 49s you know and like I wouldn't do I wouldn't do those kinds of things today, um, but that's our history. That's part of part of Res X, you know. That's what kept us alive in the early years. Uh, when I found out my uh, girlfriend of five years now, Tashina, was pregnant um, two years ago, uh, it was it was like a wake up call for me. And it sucks that you have to have kids to to have a wake up call, right? But for me at my age, you know, I, was, I felt this was a really good time, a good opportunity for me to get my act together, for me to really uh, focus, you know, you know I, I didn't want to go back to work in, 
you know, minimum wage jobs because I didn't have a university. And I remember one night I was, um, earlier in the year I had applied to, uh, into this young entrepreneurship camp to uh, raise capital or to win a, this competition. And it was like a year long competition and I dropped out of it for personal reasons. So I'm working at this place as a porter. And what this event was for was for that entrepreneurship contest, you know, and there was like people all dressed up. I remember seeing the people there that were there from the beginning, early in the year, you know, and that was just a, a, a real wake up call. That on top of, that was before I found out Deshina was pregnant and, and I thought, okay, I really have to get my stuff together. I have to start, you know, I'm wasting time here. I'm killing time. So now this little company is more than just a magazine. It's not just a magazine that we're doing. It's, um, it's, it's all these different multimedia services. We're a young company and we have a lot of people that are working with us uh, and working for us under this. So it's not just a magazine now, it's, it's now it's a TV show and now it's becoming something even bigger. So now we're getting ready for the next steps here, which is TV and film and really taking that to the next level. And it's exciting, but it also scares the heck out of me too. <laughs> I have a lot of, a really strong team, a good amount of people that are working with me that kind of believe in this dream and this vision. But the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out. And that goes for everything. It goes for relationships, it goes for school, um, you know, that goes for business, that goes for sports, all of that, right? The people who work the hardest, you know, are the people that are gonna move ahead further. Wow, everyone, did you guys see that vision? That was amazing. I'm so happy to be a part of something so big, and not just big um, in regards to professionalism, but this magazine, this TV show is for everyone, and I'm so happy to bring that to you guys. Amazing. Stay tuned. On today's show, we have reflections on the Smudge Walk, on the Stepping Stones Career Fair, Battle in the Valley, and a panel of the family of Rezex. Don't go far. We'll be back. Hey, Ryder fans, I'm Rod Peterson. Join me and a panel of Ryder experts each week for In the Huddle, Saskatchewan's only primetime television show on Canada's team. Join me and my panel of Ryder experts for all the latest on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Brought to you by Bennett Dunlop Ford. For the best online dealership experience, it's honestly better at BennettDunlopFord.com. In the Huddle, Tuesdays at 7, only on Access 7. Hi, my name is Bob Friedrich. I'm the host of Cruising on 7. We take you all over Saskatchewan and show you some of the coolest of rides and some of the best car shows around. Watch Cruising on 7 on Thursdays at 7, only on Access 7. Welcome back. Aaron and I signed up as co-hosts. We ended up doing some stories as well. Our first story was at the Stepping Stones Career Fair. For over 10 years, the Stepping Stones Career Fair has been in Regina. Aaron and I got involved in some of the youth activities, including the firefighting booth, where you're allowed to try on some of the gear. Check it out. Hi, everybody. Uh, Cadmus and I are here uh, reporting at Stepping Stones Career Fair. Um, we're here with First Nation Sensation. We will start. Um, we just wanted to ask, what are you doing here today? Um, well, uh, I was here for two roles. I guess I was here, first of all, to try and engage with the Aboriginal youth and encourage them uh, to start thinking about their careers at, at this point because there's so much opportunity out there uh, for Aboriginal youth. So that's uh, one of the reasons. And the second reason was to wrestle. Uh, I've been involved in professional wrestling for a little over 18 years now. And one of the things that I like to do besides perform is to promote shows and organize them. Uh, my shows are a little different. They're more catered for um, empowerment and to, and to deliver a positive role model message to use uh, through my sport, through professional wrestling. How's your experience here at Stepping Stones? Well, it was good. There's lots of job opportunities. There's uh, school opportunities to build your career on. It was very excellent. I liked it. I'm volunteering today um, with my school, Treaty 4 Ed, and we were handing out bags and taking care of all the prizes and just looking after the students. Okay, and how has that been engaging with the youth and the students here today? It's been really fun. It was a really good turnout. A lot of kids came. Um, yeah, no problems. It was a good day. <laughs> so I'm here with Russ, 
with Regina Fire and Protection Services. So Russ, tell us what your goal was today at Stepping Stones. Well today we, um, we, brought, a, we brought a crew here from our station next door and they, we showed them our equipment and we did a demonstration of our extrication tools or the jaws of life. So they got to see a crew in action, kind of cutting a, door, a car apart. Um, we were just kind of replicating a call, a typical call that we might go on. So, and just showed them our equipment, let some of the students try on some gear and just get a, get a feel for our job. We're hauling away Cadmus's uh, bingo van, bingo as van. you can see. Texting and driving kids is not good. <laughs> kids do not text and drive. Aaron and I decided to have a race on who can get dressed the fastest if the fire was to go. Okay, yep. loser, stop, drops, and rolls. Okay, we got Russ here to tell us to go. My money's on Aaron. Ready? Go. Was that? <laughs> they call that a draw. Was that? That's the worst case. I think that's. I don't think we would have made the fire in time. No, I think we would have been no. toast. This Stop is quite heavy. Roll. Stop, drop, and roll together. Do it. <laughs> Jeez, stepping stone sure was great. I learned so much as I always do. One thing I did learn was Cadmus Delorme sure knows how to put on clothes fast. Another thing I did learn was he doesn't know how to stop, drop, and roll, but rolling on. Every year, North Central holds its annual smudge walk, where hundreds gathered to walk alongside each other and pray in a good way for their community. Rezex walked alongside with everyone else. Check it out. I think it's absolutely phenomenal uh, the amount of residents that participated today. It's outstanding. I think it's grown every year. And uh, we couldn't be happier to participate and be uh, here with the kids and the elders and the youth, uh, everyone that's here uh, celebrating. And really, with the theme this year of one of celebration, I think it's extremely fitting. Uh, I see this community just uh, gaining so much momentum over the last, especially the last two or three years, I would suggest. Tremendous momentum with uh, major infrastructure investments, a real sense of community. And and it's important to, uh, to showcase those things and look at the positives. Uh, certainly there's challenges, but there's challenges in every community. But I think what's really uh, telling is uh, this community is showcasing all of the positive things that's occurring here. It's something that showcases our community in North Central as well as across Canada in um, response to the McLean's article. And there's a lot of potential that's taking place in Regina and with the community and you know with different organizations in the private sector and government and I think it says a lot about the people in this community as well as uh, where we're going to be going in the future. Well, I think it's a really cool initiative it's it's you know the idea of thinking that North Central is Canada's worst neighborhood I, I think it's a, a, a terrible terrible myth and I think it's important to come and show uh, support for the community and and support for the, the the people here in North Central Regina. For me, I support Smudgewa because I do believe that it's uh, something to help the numerous residents in our community kind of tie back to our traditional practices. Uh, my children were both involved in the Smudgewa this year, so the hype leading up to it was pretty pretty big in our house, and I'm really proud that my they were included in the Smudgewa. That is a great event that happens each year. Another great event that happens each year is the Battle in the Valley, a basketball tournament that happens in Fort Capel, Saskatchewan. And Res X was there. Uh, my name is Ryan Shorty, and this weekend we have Battle in the Valley 6 men's basketball tournament. Uh, it's a two and a half day tournament. 14 teams compete for cash prizes and clothing. I've been playing basketball for years and years and it's just something I love, it's my passion. Um, I thought I'd start hosting tournaments so more people can, can get involved in it. Um, there's a lot of interest out there for it. 
um, and also to put it on for the community because the town of Port Capel, I really believe it needs something like this because it's it's a very positive thing for the community, the people that come out here and and uh, be part of uh, such a you know such a great event. So you know, there's a lot of interest for the tournament. Every year, I get different teams from all over uh, Canada, even uh, in the United States. There's, so there's a lot of interest, but you know, it gets out by word of mouth, and uh, people, you know, really want to show up to the tournament, which is, you know, it makes me a lot happy and makes the community happy that something like this can take place. Competition is really good. You know, you got Michael Linklater in here, Willie Murdaugh, you got Shorty. You know, these are all good basketball players, and you know, they can all shoot, dribble. And uh, they're all very competitive, so you know, everybody wants to win. And, and when, when you get that competitive nature, you know, you start bashing heads, right? And you get physical, and it just, it, it's really good. And everybody sort of knows everybody, right? So it's a lot of friendly, friendly play, too. So, oh, man, friendship, family. I, I'm from Standing Buffalo, and it's a good reason to come out and visit family, you know, see old friends. I grew up in Regina. Uh, Went to high school, or went to school at Sacred Heart, went to Notre Dame, and you know, it's just good to come out and see, see old friends, you know, and just play basketball and have a good time. So. Competition out here is, is, is really tough. You know, you get a lot of um, university players and college players that are coming in from Alberta, uh, coming from Manitoba. So it's a good caliber tournament. Also, too, is it's to support, you know, basketball within Saskatchewan. You know, it's really important to help uh, grow the game. Job, you know what I mean? We just came out here, we did what we had to do, and uh, you know, that's all it is. That's all it was. It's just business out here, you know what I mean? So, teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs>
and I'm really happy to be part of the team. I'm just like, I'm excited for the show. I'm like rooting for like everybody to watch it and like, yeah, it's gonna, it's exciting. It's great. You know, as Chris, as, as Jay was saying, yes, Chris plays a big role here. You're kind of like Uncle Dad around here. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get the message out to our audience about what uh, what's about to come, what, what they're watching, why do they want to come back and watch Resex? Well, I think that every episode is going to be a little bit different because it's really like, um, uh, you know, in future episodes, we're going to do skits, we're going to do streeters, uh, we're going to do rants, uh, exclusive interviews, uh, music reviews. So. Um, there's a whole lot more coming up later in the season too, so which is really exciting. All right, and Jay Bird, did you want to kind of tell us uh, what you envision for ResX? Well, I think we're new, right? We're different. Um, there's nothing really like what's happening in this show that's currently in the market at this point. It's kind of a variety show in a sense. We, we got we got news and hard hitting stories, documentaries that are can be serious, don't always have to be, but we're going to lean into that side and try to find out some of the deeper issues in our own society. But then you have funny stuff like skits, and then you have fun stuff that's artistic, like music and artistry. So I like it. I think this we're doing something that's very interesting, and from and it's coming straight from Saskatchewan, from the minds, just like the people sitting here. Um, and that says to the kids out there, anybody can really do this. Good. And Candy, you know, you're, you're you've seen the film industry. You know, you're in it right now. What is it that Res, Red, Res X can contribute to, say, just? our audience in regards to comparing it more to the film industry, but just getting the uh, message out there? Um, well, I think it's really important because like as Jay was saying, there's nothing out there that's like this show. And there's so much variety to it, but it's coming straight from people within our community. And we're creating those stories. We're creating all different types of stories and we're creating something for everyone. And we're making it accessible by putting it on the web. And that's a big deal these days because everybody's, you know, everyone has access to the web on their phone. So it's going to be very accessible to people and that's a good thing. And I think, you know, it's, it's awesome. Ah, all right. So I just wanted to ask, what is everybody excited to see from the show? Um, me, I'm, I'm really excited to, to writing scripts, to, kind of, uh, to writing uh, comedy skits, and to kind of see what we can do with that as well, like um, going to powwows as well, like um, just really anything that we can come up with, because that's kind of really what I'm looking forward to. Jay Bird. I like the, the skits as well. I want to find out if you're wearing pants behind the desk. I read the rules <laughs> and it, it, it said pants. It didn't say anything Optional. specific. <laughs> so, well, Jay Bird, there's someone out there right now looking for relationship advice. What is it that Jay Bird could tell him? <laughs> Don't move in too quickly. Um, take your time and it'll, everything will get to where it should get to. That right there is, is a piece of, of what <laughs> Jay Bird is going to offer to this show. Relationship advice. Sure, that's a skit. Let's do it. <laughs> Organically happening. Uh, well, that's great. Um, I just want to say that, that as, as co-hosts here, you know, we are doing a lot of front of the scene stuff. But you know, in order to make an event or a, a, some, some show like this happen. It's the behind the scenes mm -hmm. that really make it happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on behalf of co-hosts here, we just want to thank the three of you, as well as the others that could not be here. Right. Now, how was my makeup done today, Jay? I like your foundation. Right. I, mean, I think the it just coming off beautifully with your brown skin. <laughs> 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 Reflect. My INAC teeth are not as, uh, as white as I want to, but I uh, really did a good job with the makeup. Any last words? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. With that, <laughs> All right. thank you, panel. Thank you, res experts, for sitting with us. Uh, we look forward to, to many shows to come. And with that, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you for uh, listening to us. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for not being on your phones. Res <laughs> X out. First show of the season, one word, Mi Wa Sin. That was great. Oh, it was deadly. No, not just deadly, wicked deadly. Wash day, wash day. Wicked. This, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Hang on. This is just the tip 
of the beaver dam about what you're about to encounter through this season. You better stay tuned for on Res X. We have a huge lineup this season coming up. Until next time, stay fit. Oh, hang on. Stay fit. Ooh. Oh. Until next time, we shall see you. Dokta. See you soon. We should have known we were in trouble too, man, because my grandmother wasn't a traditional woman. She went to residential school. I wasn't raised with language and culture and ceremony. The only time she would smudge was when we were in trouble. Um, but uh, Indian and Cowboys, essentially, again, it's a, it's a gathering place. It's a meeting place uh, to uh, create a space for digital content. Uh, a lot of the people here come here to study. But yet, they only hear about First Nations. They don't really actually get to go and see. So this being in this hallway, they can actually walk by and witness it you know, uh, first hand. You know, this tonight marks one year that I've ever danced. And it's such a strong feeling, you know, when you're out there, it's just um, everybody is uh, supporting you and looking out for you. So, you know, you never have to feel afraid to be out there on the dance floor. And just knowing that you're dancing for people who cannot dance, people who have went on to the spirit world, that's who you dance for. You get such a energy from that, that even when you're done your dance, your feet are still kind of moving. <laughs>